And we're back now with Senator Arlen Specter, the newest member of the Democratic Party. He did the old switcheroo this week, left his party, the Republican Party, and became a Democrat. Uh, Senator, thank you for joining us. I was just thank talking you. to uh, these health officials about uh, this flu and how it uh, was there a danger it might mutate into something more dangerous. I want to ask you, uh, do you feel that uh, your switch to the Democratic Party, uh, could that mutate into something even more dangerous for Republicans? Uh, have you talked to anybody or who said to you, you know, I'm going to follow your example, or is this just a one-time deal that uh, <clears throat> pertains only to you? Bob, it would be my hope that, uh, as uh, was reported in the New York Times last week, that this would be a wake-up call uh, and the party would move for a broader big tent like uh, we had under, under Reagan. The party has changed so much since I was elected in 1980. Uh, and now when I cast the vote with the Democrats on the stimulus package, that uh, one vote created a precipitous drop uh, so that uh, I was looking at a situation where the prospects were very bleak to win a Republican primary and I simply was not going to put my 20 year, 29 year record uh, before the Republican primary uh, electorate. Uh, but it would be my hope that uh, uh, we can maintain a strong two party system and we'll uh, stop the business of what the Club for Growth has been doing to defeating moderates in the primary and then losing the general elections. Uh, you said that you will not be, although you've become a Democrat now, that you would not be an automatic vote uh, for Barack Obama. Uh, tell me some of the things where you differ uh, with this president and with Democrats. Senator. Well, uh, Bob, uh, I uh, have said that and my record of independence is present uh, uh, as a Republican and I still intend to represent the people of Pennsylvania and uh, uh, what is good for my state uh, and for the country. Uh, one illustration uh, is the legislation on employees' choice, which is also known as card check, which would eliminate the secret ballot and uh, also provide for mandatory arbitration. Now, while I feel there's a need for labor law reform, I'm, uh, I'm not for that legislation. That's a primary item on the uh, president's agenda. And the president, the president knows that. When the president uh, uh, invited me to the White House uh, with Vice President Biden to endorse my candidacy. Uh, he said that uh, he knew I would, uh, uh, he said he'd be looking for my advice, especially uh, when I disagreed with him. So uh, uh, it's not a secret. Well, that, that of course, is uh, uh, legislation that uh, the, is very dear to organized labor right now. And the people who are critical of that uh, say that it, it really eliminates the uh, secret vote on people uh, when they want to decide whether to become a member of a union or to organize a union within their company. But let me uh, move on to something else. Uh, your colleague Orrin Hatch, uh, member of the Judiciary Committee, as are you, said this morning uh, on Meet the Press that uh, when President Obama said last week that he would look for somebody an empathetic person, a person who was empathetic to replace uh, David Souter, who's uh, resigning from the Supreme Court, that that was just a code word, a code word for saying he wanted somebody who would be an activist, somebody who would basically legislate from the bench. Uh, how do you come down on that? What kind of person do you think President Obama ought to nominate uh, to the court? Bob, I don't think that President Obama is uh, using uh, code words. Uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the Constitution has evolved on our values. When the uh, 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause was enacted, uh, the uh, galleries in the Senate were segregated. Now we have uh, uh, integration. Uh, I'd be looking for someone with strong educational and professional background. I'd like to see more diversity. I think another woman would be good. I think that. Uh, Ultimately, uh, and maybe now, we need an Hispanic. Uh, African Americans are unre unrepresented, and uh, uh, we can expect under our constitutional process to have very probing uh, questions uh, uh, for the president's nominee uh, to make sure that there will be respect for the Constitution and public policy of the Congress and not to uh, 
make law, but to interpret the law. Let me just cut to the chase here. Would uh, you favor anyone on the court who was not pro-choice on the question of abortion? Uh, I would not use a litmus test, uh, uh, Bob. Uh, uh, I uh, uh, supported uh, Scalia and uh, Rehnquist, uh, and I've supported uh, um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Breyer, who are pro-choice. Uh, I would draw the line, as I did with uh, Judge Bork when I opposed Judge Bork uh, uh, years ago, if they're out of the mainstream on the totality of circumstances, but not on a single issue. Now, you have said that uh, you would support somebody, uh, would not support someone you just said who was out of the mainstream, but I've also heard you say uh, that you thought it might be time to have, uh, I believe the word you used was a statesman, not <laughs> necessarily somebody who'd been on an appeals court who, uh, or had been a judge before. Well, I was asked if I'd like to see a politician on the court, and I uh, modified that uh, in line with Adlai Stevenson's statement. Uh, uh, you know, a politician, a statesman is a dead politician. But uh, I would like, I would like to see somebody with broader experience. You got everybody on the Supreme Court has been on the Court of Appeals, and that means their experiences are limited. We have a very diverse country. We need more people to express a woman's point of view, or a minority point of view, Hispanic or African American, so that. Uh, somebody who's done something more than wear a black robe for most of their lives. I, um, I didn't know this uh, until some time ago, and, and I think a lot of people in this country are not aware that the Constitution does not say that a member of the Supreme Court uh, has to be an attorney. Could you envision uh, being for someone on the court who was not a lawyer? Uh, I could. Uh, Mark Hatfield, the senator, was a person whom uh, I talked to Mark years ago and said that somebody like that, uh, Mark Hatfield was a college professor. Mark Hatfield was a uh, governor. He was a senator for many years. He had a deep understanding of the Constitution and uh, many uh, other disciplines. And when you uh, come right down to it, uh, uh, that kind of diversity is uh, with the right person, have to be the right person, but I think it's a possibility. Listen, the framers didn't require a lawyer. They had uh, that understanding. Let me uh, talk to you about a little politics here while we're, while we're at it. I want to ask you about the Republican Party, but let me also ask you this. Uh, a lot of people, I would assume, voted for you uh, in your last Senate race because you were a Republican. Uh, do you feel in any way that you let them down or that you had some obligation to them to switch now? It's one thing to say, you know, you, you come up to the election and say, I want to announce I'm going to run as a Republican, I mean, run as a Democrat the next time out, but to just switch parties in midstream, uh, does, that, uh, does that bother you, Senator? Well, uh, uh, I was sorry to disappoint many people. Frankly, I was disappointed that the Republican Party didn't want me uh, as their candidate. But as a matter of principle, I'm becoming much more comfortable uh, with the Democrats' approach. And uh, one of the items that I'm working on, Bob, is uh, funding for medical research. Uh, I've been the spear carrier to increase medical research. And I've even established uh, a website, specterforthecure.com, to try to get people to put more pressure on Congress to join me in getting more funding. This medical research has been a, a, re, a, a reawakening the $10 billion. We were about to lose a whole generation of scientists, and now they're enthused. There are 15,000 applications to be granted. If we had pursued what President Nixon declared in 1970 as the war on cancer, uh, we would have cured many strains. I think Jack Kemp would be alive today. And that research has saved or prolonged many lives, including mine. Now, as the New York Times pointed out in the column today, when you talk about life and death and medical research, uh, that's a much more major consideration on what I can do continuing in the Senate uh, contrasted with uh, which party I belong to. Let's talk about the Republican Party. Uh, what is it? What is it that's wrong with the Republican Party now? Obviously, they're going through kind of a, a phase here where they, some people say it ought to be more purified, others are saying it ought to be broadened. Uh, you have a lot of the uh, people on talk radio uh, who seem to be driving a lot of this. Uh, 
if you were advising the Republicans, uh, what would you what would you say to them uh, to say, you know, I wouldn't have left the party if you had done X or Y or Z? I would tell the party to take the advice of Senator Olympia Snow, who wrote an op-ed column uh, earlier uh, this week. Uh, I would say to the Republican Party, don't listen to the Club for Grove. That is a group which has, uh, in a knowing way, defeated moderate Republicans in the primary, uh, knowing that they would lose in the general election because purity is more important than Republicans in office. If you take Link Chafee's case, uh, Bob, uh, Link Chafee was defeated by the Club for Growth. Had Link been elected to the Senate in 2006, we would have had, there would have been Republican control in 2007 and 2008. Uh, instead, there were 34 vacancies left open that uh, President Bush could not, uh, could not confirm. So, so that I would say, try, try to bring back the party that, uh, of the Reagan Big Tent that I joined back in 1980 when you had Hines and Weicker and Matthias and John Chafee and uh, Mark Hatfield and Jack Danforth. The uh, room was full of moderate Republicans. If you have the Big Tent, if you say, listen, I voted 10,000 times. One vote, the stimulus package vote, uh, I was ostracized, created a schism. I don't expect people to agree with all my votes. I don't agree with them all at this point. But you've got to have what? some some latitude. What did you say? Did you just say you don't agree with all your votes? No, I voted 10,000 times, Bob. I don't agree with all of them at this point as I have uh, refunk uh, uh, many, many issues. Uh, uh, that does beg the question, which ones are you sorry you <laughs> cast? <laughs> well, uh, I don't really want to want to want to start to pick them out. I, I don't regret any of the major votes. Uh, right. uh, I, I, I'm pleased with where I st stand, but uh, 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 why, why pick out one vote and say a guy is no longer fit to be the uh, candidate for the party? All right. Well, we, Senator, we have to stop right there, and we hope to have you back soon. I'm sure there will be a lot of issues you're going to be involved in we'll want to talk to you about.